scholarly material. Why do you need it? What is it? And how do you recognize it? Your teacher may tell you to read a scholarly article for a coming seminar, or you might be told to only use peer-reviewed scholarly material for your paper. Why is that? Well, we study to learn, and at the university we base our learning and knowledge on scientific research. This is to ensure that our knowledge consists of relevant, evidence-based and well-grounded facts. What is scholarly material then? It may be the latest research presented as an article in an international journal. Most of these are published online, but some still come in printed form. It may also be a book chapter presented as part of an anthology, where each chapter is written by an expert within the field. Scholarly material may also refer to dissertations, contributions to conferences, textbooks, or reports written by researchers. It is important to evaluate the source and to check whether the publishing house is known for high scientific standards. So how do you recognize scholarly material? The most distinguishing feature is that it is written by and for scholars or experts within an academic or professional field. Key elements here are by whom it was written and for whom. In other words, who is the author and who are the readers? The author may be a researcher or an expert affiliated with a university, a research institute, or a governmental authority. A researcher may very well write a piece for a newspaper, but interesting as it might be, this does not make it scholarly. This is because it lacks important elements, such as a description of the methods that are being used to obtain all the data, or a list of references to the theories that are being utilized. Newspapers have different readers in mind than academic journals. Academic journals differ from newspapers and magazines in many ways. You won't find a journal at your local supermarket. Most often journals are only found at university libraries. You also won't find any ads in these journals as they rely on subscriptions for their financing. Whether it be the readers, subscribers, authors or publishers, it is in everybody's interest that the material maintains a certain degree of quality. Therefore, the publishers often ask experts within the field to review and comment on a draft so that the author may improve the article before it is published. This is called peer reviewing. Since the commenting experts and the author are considered peers as they work within the same field of research. These experts are also called referees as they pass judgment on a draft article. Therefore, you might find the term refereed articles instead of peer-reviewed. Scholarly material differ from magazines and newspapers in both vocabulary and form. Since the content is aimed at academic readers with some prior knowledge of the subject at hand, the language may contain specific terms and concepts which the readers are assumed to understand without further explanation. The academic form becomes evident especially when you look at articles, since more or less all of them contain a section presenting methods used, as well as sections for theory, results and discussion, and last but not least, references. Academic writing is a genre where we present different ideas or claims within a scientific field and analyze and discuss these from a critical point of view. Through academic writing, you have the opportunity to show that you've identified and understood current research. It is expected of you that you present your own claims and arguments built upon the conclusions that you've drawn from other researchers' theories and maybe also your own empirical findings. Perhaps you are supposed to explain data that you've collected through interviews or questionnaires. Perhaps you're doing a literature review within an area of your scientific field. Or maybe you're answering a question on your home exam. Either way, you're supposed to explain your thoughts using a certain style called academic writing. This involves the use of a formal tone where you objectively present theories, even those you don't agree with, and explain your standpoint. Your text is supposed to be written in a concise, formal manner, where it is easy to follow what theories you've based your own ideas on. The style of writing depends on what you're doing. A text written for a home exam differs from a thesis paper or a draft article. 
the main difference is the structure. If you are uncertain of what is expected of you, do not hesitate to contact your teacher, who can explain the intended course learning outcomes to you, and also give you examples of other texts. By reading scholarly material, you get a feeling for the vocabulary and form used in academic writing. The more you read, the more you evolve as a writer yourself. There are a lot of practical tips to be found on academic writing. We recommend you to have a look in our subject guides where you can find useful resources. The subject guides can be found on our webpage.